Is it important to be charismatic? Let's mm -hmm. talk about that first. Yes. Is it valuable and more important to be charismatic versus less charismatic? Mm -hmm. Less to the point. Yeah. Yeah. Credible. Yeah, to the point or, or neutral mm -hmm. energy. I mean, what's more valuable in society in accomplishing goals and mm -hmm. getting what you want? Mm -hmm. Okay. Very charismatic. Or neutral neutral okay so this is the biggest mistake I think facing really really smart people I think really really smart people and this is most of my students they're like off the charts smart creative brilliant they make the mistake of thinking if I have enough book smarts if I have enough technology smarts I don't need the people smarts mm. now here's what research from Princeton University found <laughs> I'm so excited yeah, for this yeah okay because I already know what's gonna what you're okay. gonna say in a sense yeah okay so this study completely changed my work and changed my life. It was done by Dr. Susan Fisk in 2002, and since then they've been able to replicate it and build on it and build on it. So this is very solid research. What she found, very highly charismatic people have to have the perfect blend of two traits. And this is where it's really, mm -hmm. this is why highly charismatic people are so unique. And this is why we love them so much. To be highly charismatic, to be compelling, to be captivating, you must have a perfect blend of warmth and competence. Mm. And we talked about this the very, very first time we met, but since then, so much more has come out about it. Very, very smart people make the mistake of showing up as all competent. They try to blow you away with their mm. numbers and their facts and their stats and their data, but they're seen as cold. Yeah, They're seen as intimidating. On the other side, you have people who are highly warm. They have competence, but there's not a balance. They show up as highly likable, highly friendly, but they're interrupted. They're told that they're not being taken seriously. They're not credible. Right. Yeah. They're, people forget having met them before. Mm. And so I think that most people problems, I'm, I'm even going to say all people problems, I mean, all people problems stem from an imbalance between your warmth and competence. And so not only do I think that charisma is essential for being successful, I actually think it's the only way that people will be open to your competence. So you could be all the book smarts in the world, yeah. you could have the highest IQ and remember everything on any test, or you could be an encyclopedia yeah. of wisdom and yeah. information. But what I'm hearing you say, if you don't have charisma, mm -hmm. at least some of it, mm -hmm. then people won't take you seriously or they won't care as much or they won't be as engaged. It's not just engaged. There's two questions that humans ask themselves about the person they're with. And this happens immediately in every interaction. By the way, video too. We forget that this is not just in person. This is happening the moment you pop on video. It's happening the moment someone opens your LinkedIn profile. I did a whole bunch of research on LinkedIn profiles specifically because that's where a lot of our first impressions yeah. happen. Okay. When people see your LinkedIn profile, when people see you on video, on Zoom, the first question they ask themselves, and it is chronological, the first question they ask is, can I trust you? Basic instinct, are you going to be my ally or my enemy? Can I trust you? The very second question they ask is, can I rely on you? So when you're in a meeting, on a date, in a call, in a pitch, a negotiation on LinkedIn, the two signals that you want to cue people with as quickly as possible is, yes, you can trust me and yes, you can rely on me. The problem is, is that most professionals right now are going mute. So I don't know if you've noticed this, but it feels like in the last five or 10 years, we've gone towards ambivalence. You know, we've gone towards, I'm not going to show anything. I'm going to be as professional and sterile as possible. And so mm -hmm. we've taken out cues mm -hmm. from all these assets and then people have a really hard time trusting us. Mm -hmm. They have a really hard time listening to us. We wonder why people are slow to reply to our emails. It's because we're not queuing enough. We have to have hundreds of cues to, feel, to answer those two questions. Interesting. So how do we create more trust and reliability instantly? Yes, okay. So here, let's talk about trust first, because it is chronological. We have okay. to trust someone to rely on them. Mm -hmm. That's why starting with your competence doesn't always work. Mm -hmm. So trust. So the very first thing is a weird one. It's a really weird one that I'm gonna talk about first. So you don't have to be competent to be trusted. To be charismatic, you have to be competent and trustworthy. Okay. Right? So we want that perfect mm -hmm. balance, yeah, right? You're, you're, you're trying to- smart enough and you're warm and yes. likable. Yeah, okay, and okay, so like, let's look at this cover. So really, really successful book covers, mm -hmm. just like really successful LinkedIn profile pictures, very quickly signal both trust and competence, mm -hmm. right? They both signal both these at the same time, okay? So um, let's talk about the first one, which is space, space zones, okay? So, sorry, I'll give it back to you. I took it away. <laughs> Space yeah. zones? Space mean, zone. What is We're going to talk about zone? space. We're going to talk about the distance between people. So the distance between my nose and the camera lens. You mm. can't see it. But in this photo shoot, I made sure that the distance between my space and the camera lens was a certain space. How far? So 
I wanted to be in what's called the, the social zone. Okay, so this is not made up by me. This is actually uh, research is based. There's four zones for people. The intimate zone, the personal zone, the social zone, the public zone. Remember that um, Seinfeld episode if you ever saw of close talking? Yes. Ever had this where someone walks up like right into your face uh, and like uh, yes. talks into your mouth? Uh-huh. Okay. So that's called close talking. And that is the first big rule. Intimate zone. Intimate zone. You when don't want to be there. You don't want to be there unless you're about to get intimate. Zero to 18 okay, inches apart yeah. is okay, intimate yeah. zone. Okay, so here's what happens. This is the biggest mistake I'm seeing right now is we're all on video call all the time. You're taking photos like yes. this, selfie, like yes. what does that do when you're projecting a video or a photo of that close? It is literally saying, I want to get close really, really fast. And so if you have someone who's super high warmth, they're like, yes, mm -hmm. vulnerability, mm -hmm. intimacy, and you're going to attract those kind of people. But if you have someone who's like, whoa, 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 mm -hmm. take a minute, they are, they are turned off. So what's happening is on video calls, you hop on FaceTime, you hop on video or on Zoom, and people are like right up in their camera. It's, yeah. Right? Their, their nose and their camera are, are, are 10 inches apart. And so someone's like, whoa. It's too close. Yeah. It's too close. Okay. So that's the first one is you want to respect the space zones. The, the sweet spot is a foot and a half to three or four feet away. That's, mm -hmm. that's that social zone. That's where we're making eye contact. If I wanted to reach out and high five you, I could. We're still respecting each other's space. So for those, one is when you're on video, in your photos, that if you want to have that balance, you want to be 18 inches to about three or four feet away. Okay. That's the so, first one. Social zone is 18 to three feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the personal zone, by the way, is still good, but that's a little bit farther away, right? So that's, uh, you're just starting to get to know each other. When you see someone across the room or a boardroom or a networking event, they're usually about um, four to seven feet away, which is the next zone, which is the personal zone. Okay. And then you have the public zone, which is obviously from far away. Okay. What we like in human behavior is we like someone to come towards us slowly. That's one of the reasons I think we're so burnt out on video. You know, we, we have these back to back to back video calls and we wonder why are we so tired? I'm not even in person. The reason is because it's cueing us in ways that are not natural. In person, I walk into a room, right? Like I walked into the office today and you were waiting. I was like, hi, and we yeah. and then we hugged. That was the, per that's the way humans like, right? It's like this from public. So it's not like you open the door and I'm right there standing in your face. <laughs> that would have been a lot. I was a few feet back. You were a few feet like, back, <laughs> it was perfect, right? <laughs> so like that, that's natural, but on video, it's like, whoop, we're here. And that's why oh, yeah. we can get so fatigued is because the cues are unnatural, which actually leads me to the second kind of trust cue that's important. Yes. Is when we can't see someone's hands, our brain has a really hard time trusting someone. It's so funny. I think ever since that interview, I'm always keeping my hands out. Yeah. I don't think I was keeping yeah. my hands in before, but I think I'm just more aware of it when I'm walking by someone who might be a stranger. I just have my hands out and relax and yes. loose, but my, you know, I'm not yes. like, tight or tense and I'm not like hiding them or anything. Yes. It's just, yeah, just walking normal and say, hey, how's it going? You know, I'll uh, even do like a little it. wave, yeah, just to show. That's super hey, charismatic. Say, hey, good to see you. you that's know. it, that's it. So when we, so I love Shark Tank. Do you know that yeah. show? Okay, I, love I know it. you had I love it. Friday nights, oh, Shark Tank. Shark Tank. So I wanted to know watching Shark Tank, was there patterns between the least successful pitches Interesting. and the most successful pitches? This is cool. Okay, so we analyzed wow. 495 Shark Come Tank on. pitches. Yeah. What were the main things you, you saw from okay. those successful and those not? One of the biggest differences between the least successful pitches and the most successful pitches was what you just did. Hands. Right. So when you walk down that Shark Tank hallway, that is beautiful, right? That, that's exactly what we're talking about, space, right? Public to personal to social to intimate. So it's a nice warm up. The best pitchers, when they were all the way in the public zone, signaled, hey, sharks. No way. And they'd walk into the room, they'd take their place in the carpet, and they'd go, good morning, sharks. Or, hey, Kevin, Mark, we'd love to have a deal with you. They would greet with some kind of hand gesture. The least successful pitchers walked in with, I think they thought they were being humble, but it actually reduced trust. They hid their hands either in fists, behind their backs, in their pockets, or holding a prop. Sometimes accidentally they hid their hands and they didn't hand greet. That makes it really hard for someone to say, I can trust you. And that is a primitive part of our brain that when we can't see someone's hands, like if I were to you know, do this entire interview with my hands behind my back. Like what's she doing back there? What's she doing? Yeah, yeah. What are her hands doing? So the reason why this is important mm. is because gestures help lower cognitive load. Interesting. When I use gesture, I'm more fluent. I'm mm. able to be more competent. I'm able to underline my words. I'm able to say, this is a really important point. They are like our body language highlighter. 
That's how I want you to think about them. What happens if we don't, let's just, ah, I'm just kind of socially awkward. I like keeping my hands down the whole time when I'm communicating. What happens if we don't use our hand gestures at all in a conversation, in a pitch, whatever, you know? Two things. One is it's harder for you to process. They've literally the found that- The person speaking, it's harder correct. to process. It's going to be harder for you to get your confidence because gestures are a way that we underline or highlight our words. And so if you are inhibiting your own gestures, you will have a hard time explaining Interesting. things. Interesting. They actually did a study where they had people explain two versions of a story. Notice two, two versions of the story. One they could use their hands and one they couldn't. The one where they could use their hands, they had less pauses, they spoke more quickly, they used bigger words. Wow. And the one where they just couldn't, just their hands were just underneath their legs. You know what's interesting? I was just reading some intros for the podcast right uh -huh. before you came in. Uh -huh. I had another inter interview this morning and I did podcast intros and ads. And I use my hands in order to do it because I feel like it's coming across as like I'm really engaging. Yes, yes. And I remember when I was reading my first audiobook, yeah. The School of Greatness, I tried to read it like just kind of like with my hands down for a while and I was like, I can't read. Like, you can't I, read. I've forgotten how to read my own words. <gasps> Being like dyslexic That's crazy. growing up anyways is I'm a little slower when I read in general, but when I started to be like, okay, I just need to get in this with my body, my hands, I felt more confident. I felt like I could flow. I wasn't messing up as much. I wasn't having to stop and restart as much. It was yes. powerful. You, yes. Okay. That's an incredible story about yeah. gesture because if you watch the best uh, like cartoon voiceover folks, they are using Animated, their, right? Yes. They are using their whole bodies. They're in a room by themselves, like recording on a, on a mic, right? But they're yeah. like, la, la. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just did the same thing. Yes. Yeah, that's what they're doing. <laughs> that's not how they're I read my audio. Doing.